Huge thank you to today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the easiest way to start your own website is this Cambridge audio streamer at $500 a good value and bonus review the Dacmagic 200M. We're going to talk about these two products and if you should buy them or if you should pass on them. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee and let's talk about these two Cambridge audio products. I had a great time at Expona. It's a big audio show in Chicago. And one of my favorite things about going to Expona was getting to know the folks over at Cambridge Audio a little bit better. I got to meet their CEO, their marketing people. And the one crystal clear thing I got from walking out of the Cambridge Audio room, and they had a nice one, they had couches and stuff, was that they were serious about audio. Not just about selling products, but about audio. We talked about music. We even talked about pretty obscure metal punk stuff that I like, and guess what? They knew about it. That's kind of the litmus test for me. I've talked to other companies, and they don't even want to talk about music. Some companies are super, super corporate. Other companies are super chill. Other companies are super excited about the music that their products can play and about the emotion that can be conveyed through their products. And that was the vibe I got from Cambridge Audio. They had a bunch of stuff in there, but two of the products they had in their room were this streamer, the MXN10, and the DAC Magic 200M. I've had the DAC Magic in before. DAC Magic is a headphone amp and well a DAC. Streamer is a streamer. Let's talk about some specifications. If you ever wanted to start your own website and didn't know where to begin, you don't have any coding experience or any experience with online stuff, well Squarespace has you covered. I have created three websites using Squarespace and if I can do it, you can do it. Do you have your own business? Thinking about having your own business? Or are you a photographer or videographer? Well, get your own website and put your portfolio online, not on Instagram, on your own website. Are you a cell phone charger enthusiast? Well, then you can create cellphonechargerenthusiast.com or .net, maybe even .org. Because with Squarespace, you can look up all the domains and if they have one available, you can sign up for one. Starting your website's super easy. You just have to type in a few things about yourself or your business, answer some questions, and Squarespace will give you a whole bunch of different templates to choose from, dozens. Then the only thing you have to do is drag and drop your pictures, double click on the text box, and fill stuff out about yourself or your business. You can sell things online, and if you don't know how to do it, Squarespace has an entire help section. They'll walk you through all the steps. They even have videos to help you through. Do email campaigns, market your products. The sky's the limit, but you need your own website. And I'm actually gonna start a new website with Squarespace. So run on over to squarespace.com slash cheap audio man to get 10% off your first order. If you're serious at all about your business, if you wanna create a website for your family, have one place where all your pictures and videos and memories can live on into perpetuity, start your own website. We should all have our own website and Squarespace makes it super easy. So go to squarespace.com slash cheap audio man and get 10% off your first order. Thank you Squarespace. So this is a network streamer, a music service streamer. It's got Bluetooth, it's got Apple AirPlay 2, has Chromecast built in, and can be a Rune player. Has its own internal deck, which is a Sabre, what is it? ES9033Q deck, and I listen to it both ways. Internal deck and through the deck magic. I'll say this, the internal deck is very good. Deck magic's probably a little bit better. If you have your own deck and you love it, no problem. You can digital out of the Cambridge Audio Streamer. MXN, what is it? MXN10. So what you do is you download their app, you set it up, setup was pretty easy. Then you enter your credentials for Tidal, for Cobas, whatever it is. It also has Spotify Connect and Tidal Connect. If it's on the same network as your NAS, NAS is a network attached storage device. I have one, it's hooked up to my router. All my music is on there. You go in, you go into the app and you pull all your music in. You can also hook up a hard drive with all your music on it too. I just did a video on a Duke Audio digital music player. And that's pretty much the only thing that did was you hooked up a hard drive to it and you played music. Pretty cool. 
15 years ago or 20 years ago, but not so much now. It pretty much covers all the different file formats. So ALAC, WAVE, FLAC, AIFF, DSD. For all you DSD fans out there, I just did a live stream where we talked a little bit about DSD and I asked how many people on the live stream use DSD and no one said yes. I think maybe one person <laughs> said yes. The DAC Magic 2, whoops. That literally just fell into my coffee. I don't know what that was. Too funny. I forgot to mention the price. So the streamer, it's $500. DAC Magic 200M, 550. I think that went up recently. I think it used to be $500. Anyway, fully functioning DAC. Has twin Sabre 90, 28 Q2M chips. Front panel sampling rate indicator tells you, well, what the resolution is. And it decodes MQA. I'm not sure how long MQA is gonna be around, but if you're into Tidal, if you're into MQA, this has got you covered. You have three selectable filters, roll off filters, and a class AB headphone amp. So $550, you're getting a headphone amp and a DAC. Let's see how much power it puts out. Headphone amp puts out 300 milliwatts into 32 ohms. So that may not be enough to power some of the power hungry planar magnetic headphones. However, all the dynamic headphones I put on here and even I was listening to the Edition XS sounded good. If you have something like the Dan Clark Aeon, which are 13 ohm, this probably isn't going to have enough power for you. What's on the back? On the back this is the DAC Magic single ended RCA output. Balanced output, coaxial and optical in for digital one. You have a coaxial and optical in for digital two. So you have two coaxes and two opticals. They both share the same input though. Full size USB, then something very interesting right here is a ground lift. So if you're having grounding issues, you don't have to worry about running out and buying some type of fancy power strip or power conditioner, you can just do this. And you have your Bluetooth antennae where you put your aerial. Aerial. 12 volt DC. On the back of the streamer, you have the RCA single ended output, coaxial out, optical out, little service connection. Then over here is where you plug in your thumb drive or hard drive or whatever else. Then you have hardwired internet right here, and then a little figure eight power connector. For the streamer, the Bluetooth supports AAC, which is the Apple codec, or the SBC codec, which is kind of the catch all. Everything can use SBC. It also works on 2.4 or 5 gig Wi Fi. All right, so it has you covered. Here's the thing though when you're doing Wi Fi, and maybe you have like a network extender or a mesh network like Orbi. That's what I have. Got to make sure your NAS and your streamer are either both on 5G or both on 2.4. I have noticed that sometimes when they're not on the same thing, even though they're connected to the same network, they don't like to talk very much. Comes with a two year warranty. Let's talk about how it sounds. Streamers are difficult when you're describing how they sound. And anybody that says that one sounds way better than the other, I don't know. I would be skeptical. Here's the big differentiating factor though between something like a Cambridge Audio Streamer and this little Weem. This is about 80 bucks, okay? This is $500. This sounds way better than this when you're using the internal DAX. So I think the value here with the Cambridge Audio is fundamentally you're getting a very high quality DAC that's included. The Weem Pro is out there around $150, and it does everything that this does, and some things that this doesn't do, but doesn't have nearly as good of a DAC inside and doesn't sound as good as the Cambridge Audio streamer. However, when you're digitaling out, things get a little bit more even Steven. So the value in the Cambridge is in the internal DAC. The software is very usable. It does not do Amazon Music though. And I know Amazon Music doesn't play well with all the manufacturers. Sometimes I think it's more difficult to integrate Amazon Music 
into their streaming software. I personally use Amazon Music and Tidal, so it wasn't really a big deal. I just used Tidal. And with Tidal Connect, I didn't even have to get into the Cambridge Audio app on my phone. I just used the Tidal app on my phone. I also use this a lot for movies with AirPlay 2. So I'll sit in the living room at night. Kids are doing their own thing, watching their iPads, watching the movie. I'll be watching something on my Mac Air and I'll AirPlay it over to the streamer. So there's a lot of options here. At $500, you are competing with the iFi Zen Stream. I would never recommend getting the iFi Zen Stream because its software is terrible. People say, oh, it sounds awesome, it sounds great. It's all well and good, but if you can't use it, then it doesn't sound very good. This also is competing with the Blue Sound Node, whatever generation of node there is. Let's see which one it is. All right, well, I guess the node is the node. So it went from the Blue Sound node to the Blue Sound node 2i to the Blue Sound node. They really stuck the landing on that one. Anyway, that's $599. So this is $100 more than the iFi Zen Stream, which don't get because it doesn't have a DAC in it. All right, it's terrible software. This is $350 more than the Weem Pro. Let's say the DAC in here is $200. So the delta between the Weem Pro and the Cambridge Audio Streamer, <laughs> the Delta gets smaller. And it I will say it does sound better. There's more dynamics. The soundstage seems a little bit wider. But again, if you already have an external DAC, the value proposition for the Cambridge starts to go down. I think it's fairly priced at $500. I wish it was $400 and it include Amazon Music. But I always wish that everything was cheaper. What you're getting with Cambridge that you're not getting with Weem is history and legacy. Weem is great. I've been very impressed with Weem. I'm impressed with their software. I'm impressed with their software update schedule. But Weem could go away tomorrow. I'm not saying that they're going to, but they could. Cambridge Audio is not going anywhere. I get, they're traditionally distributed. So Crutchfield has to make their margins on this. All their dealers need to make their margins. I'm glad it exists and I think it sits squarely where it should be sitting as far as price goes. However, I wish this had a screen. That would be cool, right? Album art and all that good stuff. I think whoever gets there first, either Cambridge Audio or Blue Sound, and they can bring in a streamer around $700 with the screen, I think they're gonna own the streaming market under $1,000. Which one sounds better? They both sound good. If you're using the internal DAC, the Cambridge sounds better. And I think even a layman's gonna be able to tell you that it sounds better. If you can't swing the Cambridge Audio from a price standpoint, well, the good news is the Wing Pro exists. If you're a heavy Amazon Music user, this is not the product for you. If you're into Rune, Tidal, Cobuzz, I think this is a very versatile component with AirPlay 2. You have kind of shortcut buttons here that you can assign to playlists. There's a lot to like here. As far as the DAC Magic 200M goes, it's been around for a while and I think it's getting long in the tooth. I also think it's leaning too heavily on MQA, which is no fault of Cambridge Audio because who knew that MQA would kind of be falling out of favor. At the time, it seemed like MQA was the place where you want to be. You want to throw your hat in with MQA. Well, maybe not so much anymore. I could be wrong though. MQA could be here to stay. I don't think it is, but I've been wrong many times before in my life. As it is, I think the DAC sounds great. I think the headphone amp is a little bit underpowered. I wish it was a watt, at least a watt. I think there's a lot of options for DAC amps, DAC headphone amps that are coming in at the same price or lower, which sound as good and do as many things. But it's topping an SMSL, which are direct to customer companies. You don't have the history, you don't have the legacy, and I don't think you're gonna have the quality control that you have with Cambridge Audio. Overall, I think both these products are awesome. I think the DAC Magic 200M is due for an update. Lose all the MQA stuff. Increase the power on the headphone amp. I think the streamer is pretty much good just the way it is. If Amazon Music was included, borderline perfect. If you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon. Patreon.com slash Cheap Audio. Every Sunday night we do Patreon-only Zooms. Patreon-only Discord. You can use the links in the description. This will be an affiliate link, which means if you click and you buy, get a commission. It doesn't cost you any more, though, so it's a great way to support the channel. You can also sign up for Amazon Music, Tidal, or Rune. All of which, except for Amazon Music, you can use on the Cambridge Audio streamer. Click, sign up, you get a free trial. I get a couple of dollars even if you cancel. You can buy me a cup of coffee. Down at the bottom of the video, there's a thanks button. 
You can put some money in the tip jar, but don't feel compelled to buy me anything. Finally, you can just subscribe and like this video. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen maybe through your new Cambridge Audio, DAC Magic 200, and Streamer MXN10. And fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.